Okay. If you're tying a Henry belt, this is the, the part that has the, the feather wrapped up the body of the shank of the hook. There's several ways of palmer or reversing a hackle or dividing a hackle or doubling a hackle depends on how you want to say it. One is to hold it, tie it by the neck, by the tip of the, fe the feather, and take your fly tying scissors and rub them gently along the, the shank of the hook and you feel the feathers doubling over. The other way is to take the feather tied or with your fingers and just pull the feathers to the side. But it doesn't matter as long as you double the hackle. And it's something that you want to play with. So that the hackle down here is doubled. That's just so as it wraps on there's no extra hackle tying up the body of the fly. So one part of the hackle doesn't tie the other down, it doesn't obscure the body. Seuss, I noticed right up front you did though. It's a capitalistic system, you know. Absolutely, and I'm the biggest capitalist there is. Who said that? Now, one person that I, re I recommend as a fly tire is Del Mazza. If you ever see the fly he's Del tied, he's probably the best wet fly or nymph tire in the country. And his dry flies will knock your eyes out. He's good. He showed me how to dub bodies down and back. If you wrap your thread down so that there's a, a space equal to the volume that you're wrapping, so there's every other space, is dubbing and then on the way back you close the gaps you went down and back with the same size fly you didn't make the body large and bulky that has something to do with the amount they they of uh, dubbing you apply to the thread also but Dell didn't respond to that now, I'm purposefully using a brown hackle so you can see that I'm not, I'm doubling the hackle. So does that mean that we wouldn't use brown? Or? You can use anything you can find in those bags. The dog doesn't care. He's attacking my neck, so I don't care. small amount of deer hair or squirrel tail. Now there's a difference in consistency. Squirrel is a little more slick than deer hair, but deer hair works well as an underbody, as does squirrel. You don't need much. It's just a slight underbody for support. Literally all it is is a support underneath because I'm going to put a feather over it as a down wing. This is a caddis fly. But it's slightly different in that the down wing makes it a caddis fly or stone fly. But the hair wing gives it support. Now, ideally, you'd use score or crow or something like that, duck, <clears throat> that would give us a good downwing. But we don't have anybody that brought a duck in today, so. This is on top. It's or on is top it, of is it like a, like a bead? it. 
If I use a duck quill or a turkey quill or something else that would give me a good V shape, then I'd say it's a V. But I've used the end of a, of a feather, just the tip of it, which doesn't give you a good V. So I'm not sure if it's laying down to the side or top or anything else. The best way to do this, I guess, is to take it off and t put on something that gives you a good firm V. Now, to answer your question, John, there's a V in there. It's tied on the back so that there's one half of the one side, one half is the other side, and there's a V coating in there, like it's a, a roof of a building or house. Then a matter of a hackle, and this will be the wrong size hackle, but it looks good because it's brown. get about two turns out of this yeah I'll get three it's not the greatest hackle in the world but it will do the job for this fly And that, believe it or not, is a, a Henryville special. <laughs>